Have you ever wondered how to incorporate plant resins in your practice? After all, they're the most treasured botanical substances in the world, utilized for their aromas, medicines, and ritual qualities for ages. Why wouldn't you consider following in the footsteps of the ancients? But the truth is, working with resins can be a tricky and sticky experience. Many people quickly realize there's an art to crafting with them, and they often get discouraged when their efforts end in failure. They waste time, ingredients, and money having to toss out failed extracts and overly sticky projects. But it doesn't have to be that way at all. Introducing the Botanical Resins and Gums course. In this unique program created by Evan of the Northwest School of Aromatic Medicine, you'll learn the core aspects and various methods for easily crafting plant resins into potent topical and internal medicines, beauty products, and other herbal creations for enjoyment and wellness. You'll know how to avoid the common mistakes and pitfalls most beginners face and discover countless ways that you can enjoy the immense benefits of nature's most precious botanical gems. This course offers five modules that go in depth into the foundations of resins and gums, learn how cultures throughout history have used resins plus their terminology, types, and composition, the medicine and ritual uses of resins, discover the countless healing benefits and sacred uses of resins plus sustainability, sourcing, and wild harvesting guides, how to make topical resin preparations and oil extracts, learn proper processing and extracting methods for turning resins into potent topical products of all kinds, how to make internal resin medicines, that is to learn the particular art of alcohol extractions for making resin tinctures, liniments, cordials, and more, and using resins in aromatherapy and natural perfumery. Learn about the benefits of resin essential oils and aromatherapy, and learn how to make your own natural resin-based perfumes. Beginners will get everything they need to get started with crafting resins and practicing herbal crafters, aromatherapists, perfumers, and healers can add powerful additions to their crafting skill set. So if you enjoyed the free workshop series this week, or if you're curious to learn more about resins, I'm sure you'll absolutely love this course. Doors to the program are only open for one week, so don't hesitate to enroll today. You could click on the link in today's podcast description to learn more about this course and to register. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. The content in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to cure, diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. This information has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. We are not doctors, nor do we play one on the internet. Please seek advice from a qualified healthcare professional. Okay, MC Calico, take it away. Yeah. Smoky herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Herb Rally Podcast. This is Mason. In celebration of Evan's new Resins and Gums course, I wanted to read Evan's Copal monograph to you all. Uh, and you can find that on his website. I'll be sure to link to that as well as to the Resins course. But without further ado, here is uh, the reading of Evan's Copal monograph. Latin name, Bursera species, or Proteum species. Other names are Mayan Copal, True Copal, Palm, Black Copal, White Copal, Yellow Copal, and Gold Copal. Family is the Berseraceae. Parts used are the resin sap. The aroma is rich, resinous, earthy, sweet, piney, and lemony. The organ system affiliation is skin, muscular, respiratory. Physiological effects analgesic, it's topical, antifungal, antimicrobial, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, anti-rheumatic, antiseptic, antiviral, astringent, diaphoretic, amenagogue, expectorant, insect repellent, vasodilator, and vulnerary. Trucopal is a very hard tree resin used as incense and medicine by tribal healers and spiritual and religious peoples throughout Mexico, Central, and South America. It is derived from several different species of flowering shrubs and trees native to Mexico, Central America, and northern parts of South America. Copal-producing trees grow anywhere between 10 and 80 feet tall. 
there is much confusion around the identification of different copal varieties, since the name copal is also broadly used around the world to generally describe tree resins that are hardened but have not yet turned into amber, that's fossilized resin. Therefore, there are many resins named copal originating from Asia and North America as well. Most of these copal resins share similar properties, but have distinction in their own natures and aromas. The quote-unquote true copal resins, however, originate from Mesoamerica, Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, and Brazil, to name a few. In indigenous societies from the regions listed above, sap is collected for incense and other holy purposes by making shallow cuts on the trunks of the trees. A leaf cup is placed at the bottom of the cut to collect the precious blood of the tree, oftentimes tears of the sap dry directly on the tree and are harvested. The resin collected in leaf basins is pounded into a thick paste and traditionally stored in the holy houses. Mainstream harvest methods are similar yet less rich in tradition. Histories and Stories of Copal Copal has a rich history in the celebrations, ceremonies, medicine, and incense traditions of the ancient Maya Aztecs, and many other first peoples of Mexico, Central America, and South America. Copal had various uses throughout these regions, ranging from everything spiritual to practical crafting uses as a binder, glue, and even a building material. Due to its strength and durability, many people would use copal as a sacred carving medium for holy figurines, deities, amulets, talismans, jewelry, or other esoteric items. To the ancient Maya, the divine god of the earth extracted copal resin from the tree of life and gave it to the humans as a gift. It is considered very sacred and is often referred to as food of the gods. It has been widely used in many spiritual traditions for thousands of years for offerings, divination purposes, connecting to the divine, spiritual healing, and much more. Among the many indigenous tribes in Mexico and Central America, Copal is definitely the most common offerings to deities, spirits, and ancestors. In modern Mexican culture, copal resin is still used as a common offering to the spirit world. The Apache and Sioux tribes of North America used to trade their crafts for copal from Mexico, which they used exclusively in their sweat lodge rituals as a holy incense. Copal is still heavily used today in the Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead celebration in Mexico, for its ability to ferry the dead to the afterlife. It has been traditionally used by medicine people in exorcisms, banishing malevolent spirits, cleansing, and smudging. When the Catholic Church came to the Americas, it eventually adopted copal resin into its rites and rituals, replacing the traditional frankincense and myrrh with the local holy incense. Exorcisms and divine uses of copal were and still used to this day in hybridized tribal Christian regions. In addition to its vast popularity as a spiritual ally, Copal has been used as medicine for several different ailments by tribal healers and shamans of Mesoamerica. Copal's strongest medicinal properties are expressed through its external applications for various disorders. It is used to treat eczema, dermatitis, rashes, itch, burns, insect bites, fungal and bacterial infections, and is even an efficient topical analgesic in the treatment of arthritis, rheumatism, gout, and muscular aches and pains. In many different native tribes, copal resin has been used to treat wounds and sores. It keeps the area clean while staving off any possible infections and is also known to speed up the healing process. Many conventional doctors who have been turned on to the healing properties of copal by indigenous patients have begun to incorporate the resin into their practice. Ongoing studies have been proving its many pain-reducing and healing abilities as a topical medicine. The most common traditional applications of copal in folk medicine are bathing the patient in its thick plumes of smoke, smudging, or applying an ointment or paste topically. The smoke is applied over the body to cure various illnesses to protect against sorcery and misfortune, and to cleanse the body after contact with the ritually unclean, especially sick persons and corpses. Huastec, Mayan, medicine people used copal in the treatment of headache, fever, nosebleeds, stomach ache, topically for burns, and for predicting rain by its flowering. That's a quote from Alcorn in 1984. The Guarani people of the Amazon used copal to treat wounds after battle 
indicating its strong protective and healing qualities. Copal's ancient use as a fumigant hints at it having decongestive properties. It was often given to patients suffering from asthma, bronchitis, colds, and nasal congestion. The potent aroma of copal incense is said to relieve anxiety, stress, and depression by soothing troubled thoughts and an overactive mind. At the same time, its uplifting fragrance leaves one with feelings of rejuvenation and invigoration of the spirit. It has also been used as a type of chewing gum to treat mouth sores, unhealthy gums, gingivitis, and cavities. Magical and Metaphysical Uses Copal is traditionally used in ceremonial settings as a clearer of energies. It is used to dispel negative or dark energies and protect participants of rituals against malevolent spirits. In different cultures, it is used to stimulate creativity and imagination and opens one up spiritually to receive visions and higher wisdom from spiritual realms. They say that it has the power to bring light to the darkness of the soul. There is vast supporting evidence that suggests Copal has been employed to induce trance-like states by shamans and medicine people for centuries, even millennia. It is used for personal, energetic, and physical protection and in the protection of property and food stores. Nodules of the resin are placed in the four corners of storehouses and granaries to protect a farmer's harvest. Copal is often used by the Korti, or Chorti, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, and many other tribes to assure successful hunting. Here's another quote. Before the hunter sets out, he must have a dream in which the deer god informs him of the price he must pay for the animal. He is told that he must pay a certain number of pesos of copal gum. The hunter prepares his copal pesos and burns them at midnight before his altar, offering them to both the saints and the deer god, end quote. And that's from Wisdom in 1940. Reading the patterns in the smoke of burning copal resin is a common form of divination in some areas of the southern Huasteca region. Traditional Otami healers read the symbols and patterns in the smoke to diagnose a patient's disease. In Mexican folk traditions, copal is also used to treat a broken heart. In this case, a ceremony takes place where the use of various spiritual tools Prepare the patient energetically before the burning of copal takes place. As the copal burns, its smoke bathes the patient, clearing the built-up negative energies that lead to difficult emotions, which dissipate as the smoke clears, bringing balance and light to the emotional and energetic heart. All right, I hope you enjoyed that reading of Evan's copal monograph. Again, I'll link to the PDF in the podcast description along with Evan's website, the Northwest School of Aromatic Medicine, as well as his new resins and gums course, available for a limited time only. And thanks to you all for listening. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Take care.